Hey guys, it's me, Saran, back to another video. So it's the other Wednesday, which makes it Hidden Figures Day. And today's hidden figure is Peggy Jones, who's also known as Lady Bo, who is a guitarist that is oftentimes known as uh, the queen mother of guitar for her work with the guitar in R&B and her uh, work with Bo Diddley, who's one of the hugest black rock and roll and R&B artists and guitarists. Um, probably of all time. So let's go ahead and jump right into this hidden figures. Known on stage as Lady Bo in recognition of her relationship with Bo Diddley was an American musician, a pioneer of rock and roll. Jones played rhythm guitar in Bo Diddley's band in the late 1950s and early 1960s, becoming one of the first and perhaps the first female rock guitarists in a highly visible rock band. She is oftentimes called the queen mother of guitar. Peggy Jones was an innovative and expressive guitarist who was an original part of Bo Diddley's sound from 1957 to 1962 and was also influential in her own songwriting and musical endeavors thereafter. Peggy Jones was born on July 19, 1940 in Harlem, where she grew up and attended Manhattan's High School for the Performing Arts. She trained in opera, tap dancing, and ballet. Her life in music took a new direction when she met Bo Diddley for the first time. Diddley was so shocked to see a young woman with the guitar that he initiated conversation, eventually inviting her to play with him in his dressing room after a show. Jones recounted in an interview, after a while he opened his guitar, asked me to grab mine and play something. When I opened my case, he laughed louder than anyone I'd ever heard before. I wanted to know what's funny. Hysterically he said, what is that? He had never seen a Supro guitar. I said, now that's a dumb question. First, you probably never saw a girl carrying a guitar down the street before and want to know if I played it. Now you have no idea what the guitar is. You think that's funny? He said, no. I continued, then you insult my axe. And I listen to Wes Montgomery, Kenny Burrell, and Charlie Parker, and I think I've heard of you. Do you think that's funny? He said, no, but I like your attitude. Let's play something. I said, okay, and the rest is history. Jones quickly became a session musician in Bo Diddley's band before officially joining as a full-time member. During this time, Diddley taught her how to play in his distinctive open tuning, and she began to make bold use of effects, which contributed greatly to her style. Diddley taught Lady Bo his distinctive open tuning and unusual techniques, and Bo Diddley would later remark that she knows every move I make. She's the only one that knows the original ways. Jones and Diddley traded back and forth between rhythm and lead guitar so effortlessly that it often sounded like one instrument. Jones herself once said, you couldn't tell one guitar from the other unless you were there. Together, they created the sound that would define rhythm and blues guitar in the 60s. During her first stint with Diddley's band, she contributed guitar and vocals to recordings such as Roadrunner and Hey Bo Diddley. She demonstrated her skill and animated style on the 1961 recording Aztec as well, where she played all of the guitars, even though it is often mistakenly attributed to Bo Diddley. She went on to perform on some of Bo Diddley's most iconic recordings during her initial 1957 to 1961 run with the band. The interplay between her guitar and Bo Diddley's was integral to the sound of the era. The two switched effortlessly between lead and rhythm parts, often within a single verse. Throughout her initial run with the Bo Diddley Band, Peggy Jones continued her career as a songwriter and band leader in her own right. She released a string of singles with groups like The Continentals, Les Cooper and the Soul Rockers, and her own band, The Jewels, also known as The Family Jewel, Lady Bo and the Family Jewel, The Fabulous Jewels, Little Jewel and the Family Jewel, and Lady Bo and the BC Horns. Peggy left Bo Diddley's band in 1961 to focus more on the Jewels, who became one of the top East Coast touring acts of the 60s. She appeared on recordings by Eric Burden and the Animals and had a brief stint in James Brown's backing band. In 1970, Peggy Jones rejo rejoined Bo Diddley after a call from his manager asking her to put together a new backing band for him. She drafted the members of the Family Jewel to be Bo's backing band and flew out to join him on his tour. The dynamic duo immediately regained their old chemistry and the elated crowd of their first show together in eight years began chanting Lady Bo over and over when Diddley reintroduced Peggy to the crowd. Peggy Jones always displayed a wonderful willingness to experiment with 
with new guitars, effects, and sounds. Her enthusiasm for new guitar technologies helped balance out Diddley's reliance on the cigar box guitar that made him famous and allowed the band to evolve sonically over the course of time. Though she typically favored Gibson guitars, Lady Bo also played more experimental instruments such as the Roland guitar synthesizer and used their unique sounds in ways not often heard in rhythm and blues guitar. Lady Bo is seldom given the recognition she deserves for helping create the sound that would define rhythm and blues for decades, but her sonic influence will remain a significant part of music history. Lady Bo performed regularly with her band Lady Bo and the BC Horns up until her death in 2015 at the age of 70. And I'm going to read you guys a quote from Lady Bo, Peggy Jones. I am not an entertainer who creates copy, nor am I the daughter of someone famous. I've walked down the path many light years ago to prove that, yes, I can do this. Watch me fly. Peggy Jones, a.k.a. Lady Bo. A hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Quick little hidden figures video. Of course, there will be links in the description box as always. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.